We've been draining the pond of God's mission to make us feel like big fish. Now you have to bear with me. I cut my teeth on this conversation. In 1968, Rev. J.D. Phillips, your God is too small for the first time, and I realized in that moment that I was in good company. Because I kept going to these churches that my father was starting and thinking, is this all there is? I hope, I long, I, I plead with God for you that you will say, is this all there is? Do these engines start sometimes? Will we always be pulled around by the mercy of the strong ones with the ropes of our wings? Will we take God as a yes to God's dreams? A church that adapts structure for the sake of mission is on its way to trying that ignition switch. So they twist and twerk to stay under the newest light-seeking growth, out on the very edge. These trees in my backyard, along the Blue Ridge Parkway, Half a mile down the road from me, there's a tree fly there. If you'll switch to that one back there for me, that'd be great. Ready? One more? One more. That tree right there is 147 feet tall. And the reason it got to that 147 feet tall is, according to the estimates that we have, for 205 years, it has been supporting the newest shoot out on the very tippy end of the branch. Mm -hmm. That all of the structures leading up to that great height have existed solely for the purpose of being torqued and twisted as the newest shoot responds to the light around it. That the reason those branches are only at the very top is because it's the last tree standing in a forest recently harvested. It was too magnificent to cut down. But all the time it took for it to grow up to the top, to that first branch you see there, that whole time it was putting branches out to the side. And they couldn't be sustained because the forest around it didn't have enough light. And so all it knew to do was to reach for the light spring after spring after spring after spring. Can I tell you what made it possible? I believe it is the greatest biological demonstration of generosity we have available to us today. I believe it is the most dramatic demonstration of what Philippians chapter 2 is all about. And I believe it is our high calling as the people of God. Every fall, that tree throws its leaves off. That is to say, all of today's successes are thrown away so that it can sit dormant through the winter and try it all over again in the spring. And I know most of us are not close enough to nature to appreciate how dramatic that is. In fact, it's kind of alarming. In the church world, we've actually created a whole profession of people who are really good at taping the leaves back on again, because we don't like that kind of divestiture. We're really uncomfortable with this model of nature. We like Philippians chapter 2 as long as we restrict it to Jesus, who, despising not the shame, God had not robbed him, he will become it. Despite it, he took on the form of a servant and casting on all of the symbols, he becomes as nothing. He's the seed dropped into the ground and must first die before it can bring forth light. This tree, I have watched for 13 years. Every year, without fail, follows God's design. It lets go of today's successes so they can start fresh with a new yes in the spring. Some of you are seasoned members of this diocese, and I want to offer a special invitation to you today. Some of you are new, you don't have to pay attention to anything I'm saying. But if, but if you're new here, please hear this word, because it'll be for you in just a few years. Those of you who are seasoned leaders, this is your moment. It is your moment to lend some courage. Lending the courage to say this. It doesn't take money to build up the kingdom of God. If you've got money, hooray. Use it wisely. That God's dreams for all of creation are not dependent on your diocesan budget. 
Can we, can we get clear about that? You know, I'm not talking about funding the whole time canon for ministry with our, your 11 black congregations. I'm not addressing that. That is one small piece of the pie that God longs for in this diocese. And you might think I'm meddling here, but it's the same message I share across the church, because leaders like you continually provoke me to be bold with this. Here it is. If you've got money, give it away. If you've got buildings and structure and perpetuity and deep foundations and tall steeples, by God, it's time to mold out of any structure that inhibits us from being the people of God. If it's getting in the way, it's time to move on. And whereas you may have been very comfortable in that ancient shell that was once a symbol of your status in the community, it might be time for our hermit crab ministry. <laughs> Can you get it? If you have resources, by God, be the life-saving station that Theodore Waddell heard about in 1957, when he says you need to put a beacon on the top that says, God gives a damn, come here, and we will share with you the riches of grace. If we have a building, it's because it's open seven days a week, and it's often, it's open for sponsoring ministry. My brothers and sisters, this tree made it to where it is today because it took this call that is in every cell of our bodies, seriously. You, as a child of God, especially if you're a seasoned leader, are called to lend each other the courage to say yes to this audacious claim that if you're saying yes to the Spirit, there is always more than enough money and there are more partners than we can imagine. It's about being bold. It's about you saying yes to the Spirit publicly in daring and courageous ways that people who are living on the edges of the church would recognize as being courageous and come forward to find them sponsoring support with you. And so let me say this in closing. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you because the Lord has anointed you. He has sent you to bring good news to the oppressed whether they're wealthy or poor, whether they have autism or they're neurotypical, whether they're Episcopalians or not yet. To bind up the brokenhearted, even if they're your clergy, to proclaim liberty to the captives, many of us, and the least of the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, and you will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. And you, my brothers and sisters, it is this future that is being birthed in our now, your now, you have a yes to offer. It's that simple. It's that holy. It's your yes.